So we have discussed mixed Nash equilibria and their existence. Let us now talk a bit more in detail about how we can find Nash equilibria, at least in simple cases, and which properties they have. So you see the photos, by the way, of John Nash, who is responsible for defining equili Nash equilibria and for proving their existence non-constructively, and it's impossible in general to constructively prove it. Uh, up to some assumptions. Uh, and uh, John von Neumann, who is responsible for general game theory and uh, mostly for zero-sum games, which we are going to uh, discuss uh, too, as a particular case. So, uh, so uh, Nash equilibria are the most famous solution concept, and uh, despite being so famous, despite being widely studied for quite some time already, for about uh, 69 years at least, since their, the, uh, since their formal introduction by Nash and proving that they always exist for a, for a mixed extension of a finite game. We can't say much in general, besides that it always exists in a mixed extension of a finite game and other existence results similar existence results which we don't study, but should, which also are non-constructive, like Glicksberg's case. So uh, there is not much known about their properties. By the way, even the description in the film A Beautiful Mind is wrong. Anyway, uh, so uh, that's uh, the reason probably that much research studies concrete classes of games where we do know more about the uh, structure of the equilibria. And now we are going to take a look at uh, some simple cases of, uh, uh, of this study of Nash equilibria. So first we are going to look at constant sum games. We looked at them already and now we are going to return having proven that Nash equilibria always exists in a, a mixed extension of a finite game. We are going to both look at the theory and at some examples. Then we will return to the potential games where we proved that even a Nash equilibrium in pure strategies always exists. And then we are going to talk about general properties of Nash equilibria and general examples. And finally we will look at two uh, very important games, classes of concrete classes of games. One is atomic routing games. So it's uh, the game where players choose a concrete path through which they want to go. Atomic means that you assume you have a, a finite number of players who each of which uh, controls a non-negligible part of the traffic unlike the case when we have infinitely many players with infinitesimally uh, little traffic each. And uh, in the case of atomic routing games, we're going to look at the efficiency. That's the famous result of uh, Tardos and Raufgarten. And then we're going to look at the network construction games as a very simple case. And also the, we're going to look at the efficiency of those games. So not just that you have an equilibrium, but uh, what can we promise about the, let's say, worse uh, equilibrium from the point of view of the social welfare. So let us go to constant sum games. And uh, I remind you that constant sum game is a game of two players uh, where the constant such that the sum of the utilities is equivalent to that constant. So it's uh, constantly that value. And zero sum is a particular case when the sum is zero. So examples include matching, uh, pennies, chess, rock, paper, scissors. And uh, the definitions also of max minimizer are, are important. So the max minimizer of a player is a value such that the minimum value of that player when the other player tries to play as bad for me as possible for him. So th 
when the other player plays as best for me as possible. And while I know that, I'm trying to maximize my value, so it's max min, and each player has his own max min. And we prove the following important theory, basic theory, that given a constant sum game, where the sum of the utilities is C, First of all, if you have a Nash, we have a Nash activity, which we don't know, we all we don't have to have it always. For example, in matching pennies and in rock paper scissors, we don't have a Nash equilibrium. In chess, we do. We don't know which it is, but we know that we do. Uh, uh, we will prove it in the future. So, uh, if you have a Nash equilibrium x star y star, then x is a max max minimizer of player one, y is a max minimizer of player two, and the max of maximum of the minimum of player one is equal to the minimum of the maximum of player one. So the order does not matter. In general, that is not the case. In order, max min is the most min max. Uh, but if we have an equilibrium, then they're exactly, and the value is also equal to the value of that player in the equilibrium. In this concrete equilibrium we looked at, and that implies in particular that all the equilibria have the same utilities. So if you have an equilibrium, then we have this equality, and then the equilibrium strategy has to be the max minimizers of the respective players. And the other way around, if we have this equality that max min is equal to min max, so that when player one maximizes, given that the other player first minimizes, it's the same as the other player minimizes, given that the player one maximizes. Uh, and so, if that the other way direction is that if that uh, equality holds, so this is equality to the left and to the right, yes. And if we take a max minimizer for player one and a max minimizer for player two, then those constitute an equilibrium. So that equality basically characterizes the fact that we have an equilibrium. And when we do, then it's exactly the max minimizers of the players. Now that's in general. And in general, we don't know if we have an equilibrium, but from this theorem, we can conclude the following about constant sum games, which uh, are finite in, uh, uh, excuse me, about the mixed extensions of a finite constant sum game. So since a constant sum game is necessarily also constant sum with the same constant, when we look at his, its mixed extension, for instance, because linear combinations of the same value will be the same value, uh, and convex combinations of the same value will be the same value, uh, the above theorem can be implied to applied to the mixed extension where we know that Nash equilibrium always exists. And then we are going to give the theorem. So given a finite constant sum game, A G, then for each max minimizer P star of player one and mix max minimizer Q star of player two in the mixed extension, so we are looking at the mixed extension they have to constitute a mixed Nash equilibrium. And in that mixed extension, max min is equal to min max. So when the first player maximizes, given the second minimizes, uh, that's the same value as the first player first maximizes and then the second player minimizes. And that's also the value of the first player in, in, a, in any equilibrium. So basically, we simply apply the theorem we just cited for the case of of a mixed extension, for the mixed extension of a, a finite constant sum game. And the only thing we need to prove is that uh, the maxima and the minima are attained. Since here the, psi, the, the, the sets are infinite. But that follows from the compactness of the sets of the mixed strategies for finite games. And from the continuity of the expectations ui and of their maxima and minima. 
have maxima and minima of con continuous function. So eventually we have a continuous function over a compact set, and therefore we have maxima and minima. So it obtains its state. Uh, okay, that's the main thing. And also, so basically, that's what we have proven. And one is. Uh, I remind that uh, one of the things we defined is the value, and we said that when you have maximum of a minimum value is equal to the minimum maximum, then we call this common utility value the value of the game. In the case of a mixed extension of a mixed extension of a finite game, the game this mixed extension always has a value. Because the maximum of the minimum is always equal to the minimum of the maximum. Because we know that the mixed extension always has a natural value. Okay. So we simply can ask what is the value. And before we go to look at examples, let us look, I think, at the last uh, statement. And that's the following. We saw in the lesson about the zero sum games, uh, or constant sum games in general, that given a constant sum game G, <laughs> the maximum of the minimum of player 2 is C minus the minimum of maximum of player 1. So max min of 1 is minimum of min max of the other one. And also, not only the values are equal, but the argument which achieve those max min and min max are the same. Therefore, taking the max minimizer of player 1, which we need if we want to find those Nash, mixed Nash equilibria, is equivalent to taking min maximizer of player 2, and the max minimizer of player 2 is equivalent to min maximizer of player 1. That's, again, that's quite intuitive. I simply mention it formally. And now let us look at some examples. So well, let's look at the following game, I call it election game. It's not the election game we saw before, but it's also another election game. That we have an incumbent a president. So let's call let's call that guy one. And that guy before the election, that guy decides whether to to uh, set the taxes on high or a low value. <laughs> now the opposition leader can only uh, influence the situation by publishing intimate pictures of player one or not. So the incumbent in the matrix I denote by I chooses between high and low taxes and the second guy, the opposition leader, can choose between publishing P and non-publishing NP the pictures of player one. So the story is that people don't, people don't like high taxes, at least that's not a popular measure. So if there is nothing else besides the taxes, if the second guy, the opposition leader, does not publish anything, then, publish, then setting taxes on high gives the guy who sets them on high a lower value relatively to setting them on low. And actually, since people don't like losing more than they like winning, as Kahneman says in his book, we, we even define the minus when the taxes are high to be minus 2, while the plus when the taxes are low is only plus 1. And the second play is always the minimum of the first one, because there are two candidates, so if one gains, the other one loses. Now, However, if the second player does publish the intimate pictures of player one, then people get a bit uh, emotional, and then player one needs to distract people, the elect, uh, the uh, people who elect him, uh, by uh, indeed actually making something they're going to think about more. So here, high taxes can only help him because they're going to distract the 
<coughs> electorate from thinking about those intimate pictures. So if the second player published the pictures, then we assume that high taxes actually benefit the incumbent guy, and that's one relatively to low taxes, which actually give him minus one. And as I said, the other guy is always the minimum of the surplus effect. It's a zero sign theorem. So first of all, there is no Nash equilibrium. And we can, first of all, we can simply check that in every set, in every place, that we can move. There is at least one player who can move to the other, uh, who can immediately improve her utility by moving. For example, if both, if players choose high and publish, then the second player can choose non-publish and thereby increase her utility from one is one to two. And if the players are here, high and non-published, then the first player can choose low and thereby increase her utility from minus two to one. If the players are, all, are uh, here, so low and non-published, then the second player can choose publish and increase her utility from minus one to one. And if the players choose low and publish, then the first player can choose high and increase her utility from minus one to one. So there is no Nash equilibrium. And besides this direct check, we can also simply conclude this by the theorem that the minimum of the maximum should be equal to maximum of the minimum, while here the minimum of the maximum is minus one. Excuse me, min maximum of the minimum is minus one, while the minimum of the maximum is one. So that's another way to see that there is no Nash equilibrium using that uh, characterization. But we know that we always have a Nash equilibrium in the mixed extension because it's a finite game. So let us find all the mixed Nash equilibria. So first, we're going to find them using the properties of a constant domain. We can also find them using the properties of mixed Nash equilibria, but first we're going to use the properties of that mixed equilibria. It's not just any uh, mixed extension of a finite game, but it's a, a mixed extension of a finite zero sum game. Because in this game, in zero sum game, we know that a profile is a mixed Nash equilibrium if and only if it's a maximum of the corresponding player. So I need to go to each player and look what is the maximum of that player. So for player one, let us denote her strategy that uh, she chooses pivs, uh, hi, excuse me, high taxes with probability p, and low taxes with probability one minus p, and player two chooses publishing with probability q and non-publishing with probability one minus q. So these are the functions based Explain it. Okay. Based on the P of the first player, her utility will be described either three P minus one because going to be minus one uh, uh, uh. it's going to be one 